Hello again all. This is the third episode in my series as I go through Georgia Tech's online Masters in Computer Science. If you would like to see the previous video before watching this one, click on the previous episode in the banner to the right. Just like the last episode, before we get started, I just wanted to thank all of my subscribers out there. I am just getting started with this series, and it is so much fun having you all here with me. As always, I hope you get a lot out of this series, and feel free to comment any questions or specific video requests you have as we move through the degree. This episode's comic shows the life of a software engineer, and how a project grows out of control every time. For anyone who's ever worked in software, this comic is oh so true. Recently, I received an orientation email from Georgia Tech to prepare me for my first semester starting in January of 2019. This email covered everything from academic policies to connecting on social media. I wanted to share some of the information with all of you, namely the degree requirements, registration for classes, waiting lists for courses, and lastly, important dates. For degree requirements, the main requirements that I found were one, that within your first year, you must complete two fundamental courses. A list of fundamental courses can be found under Current Courses on the Georgia Tech OMSCS page shown with an asterisk. And as always, links will be in the video description. And two, was that students must earn at least a B grade in all courses that are area of specification courses. For me, that means the courses that I chose for my concentration in machine learning. For you, It'll depend on what you choose for your concentration area. There are more requirements. These are just the ones that I found to be the most immediate. The email also covered registering for classes. The way Georgia Tech does it is a little different from what I'm used to. For new students, a time ticket with a specified date and time for registration will be sent out on the Wednesday before registration opens. For me, since registration opens Thursday, January 3rd, I should receive my time ticket on Wednesday, January 2nd. Registration lasts for a week, so if you're not able to get to your computer at the specified date and time on your time ticket, you will still be able to register later in the week. To register for classes, Georgia Tech uses Buzzport, which is each student's main page. Georgia Tech actually has a YouTube video on how to register for courses using Buzzport. The video is very informative, and the presenter is actually really funny. You can find a link to this video in the video description. For waitlisting, Georgia Tech uses a queue system. For anyone who does not know, waitlisting means that the course was full when you went to enroll. So, in hopes that either an extra seat would be open or other students would drop the course, you added yourself to a list of people who wanted to join the course if the opportunity came up. Waitlisting will open about four to five days after registration opens. Once it does, you can place yourself in the queue for any course that does have a waitlist. To waitlist yourself for a course, rather than search Open Courses, you must search Add by CRN. Once you are added to the queue, you should receive a queue number in an email. Georgia Tech is fairly strict on their waitlisting. If your number is called, you have 12 hours to sign up for the course. If you miss your time, they move to the next member in the queue. The last note to add is for new students, a maximum of two courses is allowed. That includes both waitlisted and enrolled courses. So if you thought you could waitlist yourself for the five courses that you like best and then take whichever seat opens up, think again. This means for anyone looking to enroll at Georgia Tech, consider making alternate mock schedules so you are prepared if you can't get your first choice class. As I said before, Georgia Tech uses Udacity for lectures and Buzzport for registration and payment, but I wanted to share this table that shows the other sites that Georgia Tech uses. I will probably have another video later on going through each one in more detail, once I'm a little bit more experienced. Lastly, just some important dates. Obviously, for anyone entering the program later, your dates will be different, but just to give you all a reference, these are some of the important dates to remember. Thank you all for watching. I hope you were able to learn something from today's video. And if you have any questions, post a comment. 
Again, I start the program in January of 2019, so wish me luck. All links from anything mentioned in the video should be in the video description, so that should be a good place to check. Thanks, and subscribe.